Greetings everyone, I'm Prince B, and coming at you with some more Amiibo stuff. Uh, today is the release of Wave 5B in America, uh, Ganondorf, Zero Suit Samus, etc. Uh, I'm here at my local GameStop, uh, and we've first in line got our numbers for stock here. Pretty much 12 of the 8-bit Mario and Olimar, 11 of the other two. So uh, being first in line, we're guaranteed one of each. So I'll have the unboxing in just a second. All right, everyone, we're back, ready to open them, got them all. And uh, I mentioned that I was first in line. I arrived at the store around four o'clock in the morning. So I'm pretty tired if you couldn't tell. But we're gonna try and keep up some enthusiasm because this is pretty exciting. Anyway, uh, I think we'll start with Captain Olimar over here. And I do happen to love Pikmin. I did a review on it. You can find that somewhere on my channel. I'll put a link on the screen. Uh, it was a while ago. But Olimar was probably the one I was the most excited for in this wave just because he's in his own little series, so it's not like, whereas Ganondorf, it's like, oh, I can get Link and I've got a Zelda figure, it's just Olimar. So I was pretty excited to get him, and like I said, I love Pikmin, and it's one of my uh, childhood games. It was actually one of the first games I ever owned, tied with Luigi's Mansion and Super Monkey Ball and Wave Race Blue Storm for the GameCube, but anyway, uh, before I open it, can I just say that these boxes look gorgeous, like sometimes you get the really dinged up ones, but all these ones from my GameStop look so, so good that it, it's almost a shame that I'm opening them, like I'm not a new inbox collector, but these are some really good packaging. Anyway, we'll start with Olimar here. And... these guys and here is the captain I love how the fact that they managed to somehow posi position it in such a way that you can't see the yellow Pikmin but he is there probably a lot of people already know by now because they already imported it but Anyway, uh, love Pikmin. They've got a lot of details here on him. You've got these little button things. I think those were added for Smash Bros. I don't think they were originally on his suit in the main game, I, but I could be wrong on that. I haven't played it in a year. But uh, good detail. Got his little treads and like there's detail on the suit. Uh, I'm not a fan of... Like, I get that they had to make a seam on the helmet so that the, where they closed it, but it's just really noticeable on him. Uh, so I'm not wild about that. He's got his antenna, which is pretty cool. It's kind of... It's uh, pretty flexible. I wasn't sure if that was a hard, just stick the way it is, but it's flexible. Don't want to mess with it, though, because I like it the way it is. And uh, the Pikmin are kind of... They're, they're, the, the Pikmin stems are flexible too, and you can also see a slight seam on Olimar's nose, but that's not as noticeable as this one. Overall, fantastic looking, and I'll put that him over here. Next, we'll go with Zero Suit Samus. Probably the, the character in this wave I cared about the least. Uh, not not because it's bad a bad amiibo or anything because it looks gorgeous. Uh, just simply the fact that I don't know a lot about Metroid. So because of that, I don't have as much of a personal connection as I do with Olimar Ganon or Mario over there. So with that said, we're going to take a closer look at this gorgeously detailed figure. Oh... Uh, that poor packaging. I 
I don't have the patience to use an exacto knife or anything. Nor the space to save the packaging. So there's that. And here she is in all her glory. Uh, I don't get why this stand is like this like clouded plastic. Uh, I think that's the same kind that DK's is, but if you look at Olimar's right here, his is like clearer. Hers is just really cloudy. It just kind of looks a little weird, but the figure itself, super good, super detailed. Uh, a friend of mine actually pointed out that, uh, I don't think I can get it on the camera. There we go. You can see the little mole right there, which is also, which is also on her actual uh, design. I didn't even notice that at first because it was just so small, but that's a really good attention to detail. Uh, you've got all these like little the gadgets, like this like watch looking thing. I don't know what that is. Uh, didn't play the games again, sorry. Uh, but overall, uh, very good. And also the, there's a good like shine on it on her suit, which just perfectly reflects the game. From like a design, or from a looks perspective, I really think it's one of the better ones. Uh, also, I've seen some really cool Bayonetta customs of Zero Suit Samus, so there's that. Bayonetta's awesome. Next up, Ganondorf, which will actually complete the Zelda series for me. Uh, I've already shown me opening Zelda and Sheep, and I already had Link and Toon Link before I started doing these videos. Uh, can check out that recap episode that I did. And uh, so we're finally going to complete the Zelda set and get freeing Ganon from his seven years of imprisonment. Here he is. Oh yes, he is probably my favorite design-wise of this wave. Uh, even though Zero Suit Samus is gorgeous and I love Olimar just as like a, because of nostalgia, I guess. Ganondorf, I think, is the best detail in everything. Just like, oh, there's like the gold chains on his mail, his cape, his boots, and his uh, like greaves, I guess. I don't know the term. Uh, and it, it was something I didn't even notice until someone pointed it out on the Amiibo, but on his Smash model and on this, he's actually got the scar from where he was stabbed, uh, and so that's reflected here. I didn't even notice that, but that is so, so cool. Again, attention to detail. I think this might be, like, the wave where they paid the most attention to detail, and it's just fantastic. Uh, he's got this beautiful, uh beautiful gold pattern on his cape with uh I think that's the Gerudo crest on there uh and of course his little crown with his hair and everything just gorgeous my one complaint uh as far as Ganon goes his hand here uh the fingers just kind of look a little weird I don't know they kind of look like sausages uh I don't know. It's it's definitely by no means like super noticeable or bad or anything. Just a weird thing. And oh, and his face. Uh, you wouldn't expect that much detail on his face considering how small it is, but it is perfect. Like fantastic. That is so good. Ten out of ten. Okay, I'll I'll take off like point two points for the sausage fingers. But all right. Finally, wrapping up this video, we have. Uh, classic 8-bit Mario because I'm not willing to spend 300 for a Wii U to to get the modern colors and I prefer the classic color anyway. Uh, if they release a standalone I'll probably pick up the modern color and maybe I'll just import it. I don't know. Not, not thinking that far ahead but actually from what I've 
read in the past few hours, everyone thought Ganondorf over here was going to be the hardest to find of this wave, and or of this release rather, smashes its own series, so that's wave 5 or whatever, and he's technically wave 1 of the 30th anniversary Mario's, I guess, I don't know. Waves are confusing. Anyway, as I was saying, everyone thought he would be the chase, the unicorn, the hardest one to find. Apparently, everyone's saying it actually turned out to be 8-bit classic Mario. So, uh, glad we got him. Uh, I wanted him anyways just because I love the way he looks. It's so creative to do the pixels, and even though I've already got, like, even though I've already got two Mario's, I really like this, and it, it's it's a cool way to celebrate 30 years with the icon of gaming. So, with that said, let's finally release him. Let's open him up. And pop him out. There we go. Oh, he's heavier than I expected. Uh, he's all his base is also quite a bit bigger, and even the figures like pretty big. Uh, using gain in his comparison, but uh, the little pipe fits perfectly. I'm kind of surprised they didn't do something like that for the base on the Super Mario Bros. series, but they were just saving it for these. And I guess they wanted to make the Mario Bros. series a little more uniform since they're just standard amiibo. But anyway, it fits perfectly here. Uh, he's got this giant clear thing, but it's not even super noticeable compared to, like, Samus's one over here, or, of course, Link's infamous stick. Uh, the pixels look really cool. Uh, I wasn't sure how well it would translate to 3D, but it, it looks really good. They even bothered to put in his eye over on that side, and, like, so you can totally display it from this side too if you want. I don't know why you would want to considering his arms covering his face. This is the way to display it. And of course you got the the 30th anniversary down here. Overall just really cool, really great way to just celebrate 30 years of Mario. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope everyone was able to find their favorite characters from this wave and I'll see you guys next time for some more amiibo videos. Thanks again.